Good morning. Everyone is so energized. Um, hi, thank you for being here after probably yesterday. Wasn't, uh, I mean, it's probably a bit early. Um, but um, yeah, thank you for, for, for being here. Uh, I would like to start just a, a little bit of um, get to know you. So, who of you have already worked with Drupal 8? Okay. So, and, uh, and the rest of you um, who already work with uh, Drupal? Six, seven, whatever? Okay. So we have, uh, let's say, uh, at least experienced uh, Drupalistas here, but a couple of them would like to learn maybe more about Drupal 8. Um, just first, a little bit about me. Um, I'm from Slovenia, that's uh, the neighbor country here. And uh, the whole team came here uh, to, to this conference just to get um, just to get a bit more, um, you know, experience from 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 other developers. Um, I come from a, a company called Edge Drop, and we do essentially Drupal development, and we help other agencies on on projects. Um, that's my contact information. You know, if you need any help, or just you know, give me a shout, and uh, I will try to help you however I can. So why this presentation? Um, I think that everyone needs to learn about, you know, everyone learns from mistakes. So why would you make your own mistakes if you, you know, if you can learn from some other people's mistakes? Um, and um, actually, um, a couple of years ago, I did this presentation, top uh, mistakes on, you know, on, on Drupal development. And this this one actually covers up, you know, all of the more or less soft things that you, that can go wrong with Drupal, like how, you know, how to approach the design, how to approach the um, architecture uh, design, and then how to you know how to implement best practice. Um, so if you want, just you know, take a look at this presentation. A couple of things are outdated because they were you know resolved with Drupal 8, but most of them are actually still valid. So it, it kind of is the same. We, we're, you're always seeing the same problems again and again. Um, actually, one of the first mistakes you would probably do is that you won't have 20 of them. Um, <laughs> so I made this uh, title of the presentation before I actually had the list of 20 mistakes, so they're not there. So, you know, if uh, anyone is here to list to hear 20 of them, yeah, sorry. <laughs> but that's actually a good thing because um, how I did this, uh, uh, so one of the things is, you know, I went to my team and asked them what were the things that they repeatedly made it wrong or the things that, you know, were so obvious at the beginning, but then when they realize it, you know, you just know it. Um, I got some feedback there, and then I went to do some research on articles and on Stack Overflow. What are the questions that are keep it, keep getting repeated? And yeah, to be honest, uh, it's not it's not so much of that. Um, a lot of things are very specific, very you know developer oriented. Um, but on the other hand, it's actually very hard to to get the best practice uh, information. So you can have you can get an article that tells you how to do a module that has a blog, that has a page, how to do this and that. But the general, you know, where to start and uh, what's the best practice, how to approach things, that's kind of very hard to get because it's also very hard to write that kind of content. Um, I think that one of the things, one of the first things that you can get it wrong is that you actually start with Drupal 8 when it's not ready or you're not ready. That's, you know, a different thing. I think that there, even in this room there is a couple of people who are definitely ready to take any kind of challenge and, but there are also some people that, you know, would need some, we need to go through to, to this uh, learning curve and just 
essentially learn a lot more and because they would have to do more custom stuff, they would have to code, they would have to uh, do some, uh, you know, do some design thinking. So essentially, you know, how do you know that your next project is ready? I mean, how do you know that Drupal 8 is okay for your next project? Um, if you have experiences from Drupal 7, then it's quite easy because you know that with Drupal 7 we can build everything, so now you just know, okay, I need this for this functionality, I need, I need this module, and of course, if you, if you don't have this module for Drupal 8, then it means that you have to code it or port it yourself, that means a lot more work. If you know how to do this, that's okay. If you don't know, then it's not ready for you. Uh, doing that research is actually pretty easy. Um, essentially, you make a list of the things that you need to do, find the modules and then look at their statistics. Uh, they're, they're, those statistics will actually show you how far is it, the module, and how actively is being used and developed. Uh, taking a look at, you know, are there uh, any kind of, um, is there um, a solid release or is it only development version or alpha? Uh, you can take a look at the issue queue where you can see, you know, how regularly it, it gets updated because at some at some uh, for some modules even though they have a development release you can see that this is very actively uh, a lot of people are actively working on that and essentially you can go and use that on your on the production and because you know that in a couple of months that will be that will be all okay um, but um, so this is actually a very good way just to see what's what's ready and and and, and what's not um, the other um, the other way would be that you're not using Drupal 8 even though you should um, for example you you know we are we usually work with clients or the client you know is our employee so when we make a decision like that it's also a quite you know strategical business uh, decision because if you're advising a client to work on Drupal 7 now, that means that you know, they have, they're not able to, to grow, they're not able to innovate within that project for, for very long. Even now, I think that all of the innovation doesn't happen in Drupal 7 anymore. That's just maintenance mode. Uh, and every, all, all the efforts are coming to uh, Drupal 8. So essentially, um, you have to think about, you know, their, their st what's, what's the strategical meaning of choosing Drupal 8 versus Drupal 7. So if, if it's a long-term project, I think it's, it's, it's good to have this effort and maybe uh, um, invest your time and, you know, your client's budgets into something that will last a little bit longer than Drupal 7. Um, and one of the other things is that if we are, if you know, if none of us is going to do, um, yeah. if none of us is going to do that, then we are always going to stay on the same position. And you know, this is the uh, the research from Dries' uh, blog, and um, essentially, you know, and the majority is just waiting for modules. It's not even that they're not. Uh, it's not even that they're learning, but they're just waiting for. They're just waiting for modules and. If there would be no demand, there would be no uh, no effort to actually port all those modules. Um, so it's actually on us to push things forward by pushing ourselves forward. Um, the other thing that that can happen is that you would be looking for a solution and you wouldn't found it, but then you know it's already there. It's already in Drupal core in in eight, and. Um, how do you know that you know something is 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 already in core or what's the status? Um, this link, the the blog post, actually they have a they have a list of um, the most used Drupal modules, and you can see what is their state with Drupal 7. Some of them are being uh, are being included in core, and for others you can quite easily see what's available for you and. Uh, which one are stable, which one are in development, what was the latest release date, and so on. That's, again, a pretty fast way to do, to do your research. Okay, so this is all, you know, the, the soft stuff. Uh, soft stuff. Um, 
more, you know, uh, when you start the actual development, um, first thing that you, you know, download, drush, uh, with drush, or however you do it, you will see that, you know, new folder folder stru uh, structure uh, has uh, has been defined, and um, this was a this is just a, one of one of one of the changes, uh, and in order to, uh, for example, in, uh, install a module. You don't have to put it in sites all or sites uh, sites all modules. And now we have it in the root of the Drupal uh, directory. Uh, you have the modules, you have the teams, you have the libraries. Th those are the ones that are going to be mostly used from your your custom development uh, uh, custom development or the things that you actually download. Um, this this is something that. Uh, for example, when we had like a rescue project, what happened is that beginners were actually putting uh, modules that they downloaded in the core list of modules. So then you didn't really know, you know, which one is which one are um, the contrib and which which one are custom and which one were uh, are core. I think that this just a small change in the folder structure actually made it possible that you know. You cannot really screw up because the first thing that you see is slash modules, and obviously this is where you put your modules. Um, yeah. Then, then you want to do something. So you want to have. So you have you have the modules. Uh, you know how to do this. Uh, you want to build some functionality, custom, and I think that one of the things that happen now is that. The official documentation or the documentation on Drupal.org is not is not up to speed with the actual development because the development is going on very fast. So I think that um, it's good. I mean, especially from the coding perspective. But again, but again, the best practices are not there. You're not able to find, you know, what is the best way to do something. And I think that uh, essentially uh, commercialized uh, products are are the best way to go. Uh, you have video courses and you have quite a lot of books. Um, so we also actually used uh, um, Drupalized Me to get uh, to get some you know best practices as, as soon as possible. And uh, you know if if you if you prefer reading and if you prefer having a book, that's also possible. Quite a lot of books were released in in, in the last couple of months. Um, all of those links are going to be available when I share the slides, so that's, I don't have to write them down. Um, so now that you know how to code, uh, you kind of realize that it's a bit different than it was in Drupal 7. And one of the, you know, one of the new things that was quite challenging for, you know, for someone like me, um, my background was design, front-end, teamer, and then site builder and then development. And development was quite easy if you knew all of the APIs. Uh, with uh, objective-oriented programming, it's a bit different. And yeah, I mean, if you, if, you want to, if you want to be a developer now, you cannot get away with not understanding the, all of the concepts. Before, it was definitely possible. Again, a couple of resources, uh, how to get started on that. For those who who think that they need to get a little bit more uh, educated, um, with this new, uh, I mean, with the OOP and essentially a more complex structure, um, it kind of it's kind of necessary that you use uh, IDA. Um, I mean, using uh, editors like um, Sublime, it's Still, still possible, but just to be able to debug everything and to have uh, a little bit more organized workspace, I think it's 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 really it become necessary even for front-end developers to start using IDEA. How many of you are using PHP Storm? All right, so I don't need to tell you that. Um, So for the ones that don't know PHP Storm, actually, I think that most of the Drupal 8 development was done through that. And it has 
the best support for uh, for Drupal 8. Um, one of the other things is also to uh, revise your servers. That means uh, development locally or the production servers. Uh, there is not, I mean, it's, it's still the same stack, but um, essentially now what's possible that you can actually use the latest versions of PHP. Um, you would need to also in, uh, increase the resources as well because Drupal 8 is a slightly bigger beast than Drupal 7 was. Um, so the next, the next thing would, would is um, you know how to debug whatever you you're working on. Um, again, there are some tools available which were also available for uh, for Drupal 7. Uh, Devel is is Devel was uh, a module for for Drupal 7 which has all of the supporting functionalities for developers and it's already available for Drupal 8 and it's just you cannot you cannot actually start a project without it I think um, one of the um, one of the things is that uh, since now you you have you're on this higher level of, of Drupal developer so you're using uh, so you're now you know how to do pro object oriented programming and you have an IDA so it's also you know the next step would be to start debugging uh, with uh, PHP Storm. That's actually an interesting. I mean, that's that's a good article on how to set everything up for your local environment. And uh, yeah, I really recommend it. It's a really time saver if you're not using that already. Um, so in reality, in practice, what was the first thing that for me uh, happened is that you know I I started doing something custom and. I did something, I, I wrote a code, and that code didn't run, right? And I went to the configuration, and I checked and un unchecked all, all of the cache settings. So, you know, from the user interface, the cache, was, uh, the cache wasn't working, but, you know, Drupal, a Drupal 8 has um, another level of, of, of caching. Um, don't ask me how, how that works. But essentially, the, the, the way to, to approach that is that um, there is a pretty easy, easy way to enable development mode. And this development mode uh, essentially uh, disables all of, the, all of the caching. So every time you load the site, everything loads, and this, your new code will actually work. Um, and again, there is a resource telling you how to do all of that. Um, one of the other other great things about Drupal 8 was uh, that you know you can now use configuration. Now you can actually export and import configurations. And what happened? I mean that that was pretty cool. But one of the cases what happened for us is that we were exporting configuration and and then importing it through uh, uh, through Drush. Um, but there was a, a case where we left, so we left the option to do the configuration on the on production, and we added another language, and clients started putting in those you know new content in this new language, and then with the next update we didn't export all of that back, so with the next update we actually uh, this information about this new language wasn't available, I mean wasn't exported. And so the import was actually uh, removing the language. And what happened is that all of the content that the client was inserting for one week was deleted. Um, and this is one of, one, of the, what, you know, one of the things is that you know, best practice would be that you essentially remove the possibility to do any kind of con configuration on production. So essentially, Take the configuration management as development task, and obviously you're not doing development tasks directly on production. Um, the other, the other way would also, I mean, the other um, best practice is to actually have the configuration uh, not storing in the database, but directly store it in the file system. So every time you you actually do. Uh, 
you know, a git status, you can see that, you know, there was, config there was a, a, some configuration changed. Mm. From the front-end perspective, uh, there is also um, a lot of new things. You know, I already mentioned Twig, but uh, one, of, one of the first things that our front-end developers were, were actually missing is all of those divs and all of those classes that were there in Drupal 7. Uh, some of them hated them, but when you get to use them, you actually start to miss them. So um, there's a very, very quick fix is to include um, Classy as your base team. And Classy just essentially gives back all of those things that were taken, that were taken from, uh, from, Drupal, uh, from Drupal 8. Um, again, it's, uh, it's, it's just a nice way that you, that you can solve this. Um, some some front end developers started to miss PHP in the in the templates. Um, there is actually a module that can enable you PHP eval on on uh, in the actual template. So using PHP in Twig, I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Probably it's not. But um, essentially, it's it's really now now it's the, the, there is no question where the logic should be because you have no way to put it in your template. So Pre-process pre -process functions are now a mandatory thing. Um, in order, in order to to really um, debug, or to, for example, in order to find what templates you need to use, uh, you f you actually need to find them, and then inside of those templates, you need to know what's what uh, the data is, and um, what we are using is um, Devel. Devel module also enables you to debug uh, templates uh, to essentially list out all of the available uh, variables. And with a couple of more modules, you can get a little bit more, uh, you know, readable uh, array of your of your of your content. Um, that's the search kit which does that. Um, now uh, all of the template suggestions are written in HTML comments, and uh, there is a Chrome extension which actually takes out all of those uh, all of those comments and puts it in the in the developer section, so you can easily read which templates are are available. Um, one of the other things that that we keep you know, keep uh, getting back on the front end is that, you know, there is no jQuery on on the site and your library needs it. And that's something that you quite easily miss that you have to now put jQuery as one of the, one of the uh, dependency, dependencies. Um, from the front end perspective, I don't know, um, how many of you have used uh, overlay in Drupal 7? No, okay. So overlay was a module that that was meant to be an improvement of the user experience, and I believe that that uh, quick edit is is the the next one that does the same. It looks good on paper, and I think it's good if you have a very limit. I mean, if you have a very really controlled environment, like for example, building your own product where you really can, you know, make sure that this quick edit will be always working. Uh, for us, um, quick edit wasn't really so. Essentially, we are now disabling this functionality every time. What it brings you is first you have to think about. I mean, is it only text and images in image uploads that that you're that you're editing? Um, there's also some metadata which usually can actually change a lot of things in the content. So, in order to to change that metadata, you still need to go in the edit tab and do it in the back end, right? Uh, then do really all fields support quick edit. Uh, if you have a very complex field, it's really impossible to put it on, on the front end because maybe you need more space, maybe there's you know, a couple of more pop-ups going up, and in that case, it's, 
it's it's not able to, to, to you're not able to use it. And uh, what what happened for us is that because front end developer, you know, he was doing the front end uh, development for the actual design, so you're not considering that you also need to make sure that quick edit will will always work on all of those fields and on all of those containers. So what you do is, you know, you put an element in position absolute and all of a sudden quick edit is all around the space, right? Um, so, yeah, what we do is just not, not show it to the client because they could get excited about it, but we are not so much. Um, yeah, I mean, as I was actually pretty fast going through that. Um, as I said, I think that there is not much specific things that are you know, fundamentally wrong or, or, or that all of us would trip on it. Um, I believe that that's what we have right now, it's, uh, it's something that, that we were all waiting for for, for the f last couple of years. And um, I really look forward to have um, just more and more you know, sharing on how people do things so we can learn from that and just to get more, uh, you know, just shared environment with uh, those best, uh, best practices. Um, before I end, I, um, we have, I uh, let and sponsors made this event possible. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for, for uh, making this thing happen. So now it's uh, open debate uh, questions. If someone else maybe has something that, that he knows that everyone should know about, go ahead. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I guess that we can also upload it directly to the session. I will try to do that first, and then. Yeah. There's a lot of links in there, so I think that's that's quite important. Any question? Any comment? So what is the biggest problem that people are facing for Drupal site building? Okay, okay, yeah, um, I think that uh, what happens in, in our team is that we try to design the solution, try to find solutions for small problems, and then we are like, oh, so you know, we need them to log in with their email. And I'm just giving an example, right? And then you know, there's a module for that. Wait, is it? I mean. We actually have to go and check that. So for each of those things, I mean, there was a project that we already had designed for Drupal 8, and then there was a lot of things around search, right? Search API is ready, but there were, you know, Search API has so many extensions, and we relied on that, and we said, well, this won't go. So we had to go back, Drupal 7, just to make sure that we actually deliver and deliver in time. So I think that when when doing estimates for you know for for projects when promising some you know how much time will this take you really have to be careful because um what's what was maybe very obvious to do in in, in Drupal 7 is now a custom work maybe or you know you have to wait a bit more and help of course right Okay well, um, that's it for, from me, and uh, thank you.